sometimes I like to look at my back bar and just admire how beautiful it looks. All right, everybody ready? It is Friday, so sit down, shut up. We're gonna have a nice little video. Welcome back, friends. This is Anders, your host and guide. Uh, today, we are talking the slow gin fizz. You see, here in Chicago, I am really happy because today is a good day. It is the, the, like one of the first days where it starts to feel like autumn is right around the corner. That excruciating heat is past us. Well, kind of past us. I know that we could get blasted with another crazy uh, 130 degree day, but uh, currently, today, it's beautiful outside. So I thought a slow gin fizz is gonna be really nice here because Slow gin has these flavors that are nice for the cooler weather, like as a liqueur, as a digestif. So this is the perfect cocktail for today, is what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, and we are going to make a few different slow gin fizzes. Fizz eye, whatever the plural of fizzes is. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for more sips, tips, and recipes, and let's go make the slow gin fizz. To the bar. Before we get started, uh, we don't have a sponsor today, so it's sponsored by me. I'm gonna take this opportunity to tell you to go buy your merch. We have got hats and hoodies and we're getting into hoodie season. I'm gonna be wearing them here on the channel and you can look like me wearing a top quality hat. We've got a dad hat for you dads out there or anybody who's looking to look like a dad and beanies for keeping your head warm. Try to move some product, that's what we do. Link in the description down below, click on that link and get your merch. All right, so anyway, moving on, onto the slow gin fizz. So this cocktail is rather simple to make, it's very tasty, it's an equal balance of sweet and sour, and then you have these nice light bubbles that make it very refreshing. It's a fun drink, and uh, it's also low ABV, because the base is a liqueur, a liqueur called slow gin. <laughs> this is slow gin. This one in particular is made by Plymouth. I bought it at a store, but there are other brands that make this as well. And you can make your own slow gin if you want to. Now, what slow gin is, is gin that has been infused with slow berries or berries of the blackthorn. Uh, I said it that way because that's how I said it in last week's video. If you haven't checked it out, uh, I talk about slow gin there when we talk about gins. It also has sugar added to it. So it's lower in ABV and it really is more of a liqueur. I've never seen a slow berry. Uh, I, I'm told that they are very sour and that they're primarily used to make jams. So that makes me think of choke cherries. If, if any of you are familiar with those, that's something that I'm familiar with. Not good to eat on their own, but they make great jellies and jams and uh, preserves. Uh, I'm going going down a little little road here talking about berries. Don't get me started on berries. Now, there are different ways to make the slow gin fizz. Some people will do this as a silver fizz, which means they add egg white into the drink. Some people will use champagne instead of soda water. There are a number of different ways to do this. So, let's make it ourselves. All right, all right, all right. I feel like it's been a while since I've stood here in front of you and made a cocktail. It has been a while, it's been a few weeks, feels good. All right, so we are gonna start off with the classic slow gin fizz. For that, we will need slow gin, fresh lemon juice, simple syrup, and bubbly water. For the slow gin, I'm using Plymouth, but you can use whatever brand you like. Some are gonna be better than others. You spend a little bit more money on a decent slow gin. Lemon juice, freshly squeezed, simple syrup. This is my semi-rich simple, so it's one and a half parts sugar to one part water. And then the bubbly water, you can use club soda, sparkling mineral water. So, let's build. All right, I'm gonna need a shaking tin, and you will too. I'm gonna grab a few shaking tins. In a shaking tin, two ounces of slow gin. To that, we will add half an ounce of the simple syrup, one ounce of fresh lemon juice. Traditionally, fizzes weren't served on the rocks, but I am going to be serving this like I would a Collins, in that it's gonna be in a tall Collins glass with rocks, ice. Give this a shake for about 10 to 15 seconds. Grab a chilled Collins glass. Add some ice into the glass. Here we are. Strain off the cocktail into the Collins glass along with your bubbly water. It's gonna be about three ounces of sparkling water but make sure you get all the contents of the shaker in first. You can always top it off with more bubbles. For a garnish, I'm gonna garnish this the same way that I would a Tom Collins. So a lemon wheel and a cocktail cherry. Just like that, pretty. Drop that right in and drop in a straw. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. There we have the classic slow gin fizz. Cheers. Okay, so let's take a sip and then we will move forward. Cheers. Mm. 
really nice light. It does have a nice brightness, which makes it really refreshing. Uh, but then there is this plummy sweetness, which makes it easy drinking. This, I would say, is dangerous, but it's not too much alcohol. So I'm gonna grab some more shaking tins and show you a few other ways to make the Slogan Fizz. So we are going to add in a couple other spirits. Uh, what I'm going to do is I want to maintain the integrity of the original Slogan Fizz, and I'm just going to drop down the liqueur and add in another spirit for each cocktail. The first one, I'm going to add in Navy Strength Gin. This is going to bump up the Juniper Botanicals in the Slow Gin Fizz, and I'm using a Navy Strength because I'm just gonna use a half ounce, but I wanna taste the gin. Now the second one, I'm going to add in Cognac instead of the gin. And my hope here is that the Cognac with the, the barrel notes is gonna just be a bit more autumnal. The third one, I am going to use Pisco. So I wanna see how the grape flavors in the Pisco play with the slow gin. So we're adding in kind of more fruity notes, similar to the cognac, but not quite as deep. And then the last one, I'm gonna add in Campari. This is a dangerous game we're playing because Campari can take over the cocktail. Uh, this I'm adding in because of the bitter notes on Campari. I know that Campari and Slogin go well together. There are Negroni riffs that will use Slogin. It's very good. And I think that this otherwise relatively light, sweet uh, cocktail could benefit from some slight bitter notes on the end. I'm gonna make these all at once and we are going to drink them one at a time, not all at once. By the way, if you are looking to pick up any bottles, check out my collection on Curiata. Link in description down below constantly updating with new things. Let's build again. I'm gonna start by building each one with an ounce and a half of the slow gin. Now I'm gonna go down the line and add in each little variation. So the first one, half an ounce of Navy Strength Gin. Second one, half an ounce of Cognac. Third one, half an ounce Pisco. And then finally, the fourth one, half an ounce of Campari. Just going to go down the line and add in my simple syrup. Half ounce for all of them. Yeah, I imagine you can hear the cicadas outside. I know nothing about bugs, but they are loud. Now we can add the fresh lemon juice, one ounce in each cocktail. It sounds like very small adjustments. You know, half ounce here, half ounce there, half ounce. And maybe, maybe that you run the risk of not being able to taste the differences. So if you are truly experimenting for the first time and the measurements are, are easy enough to cut in half, you can make half cocktails, it's, it's no big deal. And you don't end up going through all of your inventory of liquor. So now we can go ahead, shake these up, pour them in glasses, top them with soda water, and drink them. These are super cold, super cold. Hi. Put ice in your glasses. Hold on. Okay, number one, gin. Cognac. Number three, Pisco. And number four, Campari. I am not gonna garnish these. I am lazy. Ta-da! Here we have four variations on the Slow Gin Fizz. First up, we have the gin. Cheers. Yeah, see, I like that a lot. Definitely get the Slow Gin up front, and then at the end, I get gin. Like, true gin. Nice botanicals of juniper. Very refreshing, very light. It's gonna be a little bit stronger, but I'm okay with that. Next, we have the cognac. This one I was excited about because I'm ready for fall. Cheers. Oh, yeah. It has a rounder flavor. I know that's the cognac that is kind of playing into that. It's giving it darker notes. Uh, really, really good. I'm a fan of, of cognac and brandies in my cocktails. So if you are as well, I recommend giving that one a shot. Now on to the Pisco. Cheers. Mm, that's also really good. The Pisco I actually tasted first. It is kind of like, uh, it makes me want a Pisco sour. Again, it adds to the roundness, almost like a grapiness to the fruit that you get with the slow gin, but you don't get the, the darker flavors of the cognac. Uh, equally delicious though. I need a sip of something so that uh, I can cleanse my palate. Finally, we have the last one, the brightest of the batch. This is the Campari Slow Gin Fizz. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, also very good. Now, this one, we are really pushing the envelope with the Slow Gin Fizz because at the end, 
you get Campari and it stays with you. And it's nice, I enjoy Campari, uh, so that does counter the sweetness really well, but it is fighting for center stage with the slow gin. So I would say if you're going to add Campari to your slow gin fizz, don't do a equal split of slow gin and Campari. You're gonna taste Campari much more than you'll taste the slow gin. I'm not gonna tell you what not to do. You can do whatever you want. Uh, this is where I would start though. Oz, before we I wrap this up, do you wanna taste any of these? Yeah. Let's start with the gin. Mm, Ginny. Ginny, cognac. Cognac. Mm, I like that. The Pisco. Okay. And the Campari. Ooh. Do you have a favorite? They're all yeah. good. They all work. They're all tasty. And and so now you're probably wondering, Anders, this is fun, but why did we do this? And the reason is this is part of how you create new cocktails, how you create variations. And we can experiment with different bottles of spirits and see a, how does it change, but also how can we maintain the integrity of the original cocktail? What I find interesting about this is that usually you have a base spirit and then something like a liqueur is going to accent that base spirit. But we've kind of switched things around here so that the stronger spirit is actually accenting the gin liqueur. So there it is, that's it. As far as all of these, I think they're balanced, I think they're good, I still think they're bright and refreshing. You could try different spirits based on the season. What'd you think? Did you like this? If so, give this video a thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Get your merch and sign up for my newsletter. Goodbye. Fare thee well, my friends. Godspeed until the next time.